Hi, this is Chris, and welcome to Winemaker TV. If you want to learn how to make stuff like this at home for yourself, then stay tuned. This is a mixture of a scuppernog and a muscadine grapes. Wine I made last fall is just now getting ready. This is a weird, weird wine. It tastes awesome like this at room temperature, but you chill it. I guess, you know, I've never, you know, they say don't chill red wines. I always drink them at room temperature, and I'm like, eh, I like my wines chilled. This wine is the first wine I've ever known to, when you chill it, it loses all of its flavor. It's like drinking kind of like a, just water almost, like a with a little bit of lemon in it. It's weird. So this I only drink at room temperature. And if you like what you see here and you will learn how to make stuff like this at home, smash that subscribe button. And today is bottling day. I'm going to be bottling up many brews today and I will show you some techniques and some cheap ways. This channel is really made for the beginner and sometimes bottles run about two dollars a piece and I'll show you how to get some for cheap or free. Here are several ways I bottle up my brew and my wines just so uh, and I got all these free or cheap. Uh, these were given to me but these little flip top grill style bottles if you're making cider or anything sparkling I always like these and you know enjoy what's in them save them use them for your own and I like these for my wines this I get these from Aldi these have like a sparkling lemonade sparkling pink lemonade and it's got a flip top got a gasket you can put sparkling um, drinks in this also but because that's a lot to drink at one time I don't use it typically because I'm really only one to drink cider around here and that's what I like. And if I drink a whole one of these at one sitting, I won't be drinking much else. But to me, it's kind of hard so to drink all this at one time. So I don't want it to get flat. So that's why I mainly go with either the uh, Corona bottles that you can uh, cap or those gross swing top bottles. Now, if you want to go for the, this is more than a 750 milliliter. This was given to me. Here's a little tip. I got somebody was offering to give away wine bottles on Facebook. So I got a whole big bottle, whole big box of these. But you can also try the local uh, restaurants that serve wine, like French restaurants, Italian restaurants. Uh, a lot of them serve, serve wine. And if you talk to them, they will save the bottles for you and the cork. I don't typically re reuse my corks, but I have a friend who's been doing this a lot longer than I have just because he's, you know, more seasoned than I am. He's probably 15 years older than I am. He reuses the corks too, so I don't recommend it, but it can be done if you're in a pinch. So let's bottle up some brew. First, what I'm going to be bottling today is a ginger cider. This took a little longer to clear than I thought it was going to. Still see a little bit of the ginger in here but it's pretty much ready i shook it up a little bit so i'm gonna let it sit and then i'll uh rack it into my bottling bucket if you, if you need one of these i'll be a car dropping down to give you a, a quick and easy cheap bottling bucket so let's get this transferred to here all right my bottling bucket's at my feet you typically want your bottling bucket slightly lower or much lower in my case uh than your source source destination so we're going to give this a couple of pumps and it's an auto siphon once you get the get it going it'll just do its thing now we're going to make sure the valve on your bottling bucket is off because if you happen to if you happen to uh have that cap on that that spigot on you're gonna make a big old mess and your wife is gonna be mad at you whoo it's the summertime in in georgia it gets hot here can't have any air on because the, the sound so whoo, if you see me little spots like this it's a little hard work sometimes bottling up wine in the south so we're gonna get this and we'll be right back 
All right. So th this is going to be a sparkling cider. So I went ahead and added like a teaspoon of sugar per Corona bottle. And I'm beginning to like these little Corona bottles. So you fill it up to about an inch from the top. And you hear a little that one, that cap bent and didn't it do any good. So. Yep, you hear that little boom? You know it's good. There's that. I love those oxygen, oxygen absorbing tops. Oxygen before fermentation, good thing. Oxygen after fermentation, not a good thing. So I'm going to finish. Now that was bottling up the little ginger cider I made a few months ago. Like I said, I got a, uh, about a three quarters of a teaspoon to a teaspoon of sugar in each one. Shake it up a little bit, let it dissolve. Uh, should be ready to drink in about two weeks. So let's move on to the coffee mead. Okay, I cleaned everything, sanitized everything, went ahead and racked the coffee mead into it. And today with these, I'm going to be using these Aldi bottles. Aldi bottles been cleaned and sanitized. Now this is a coffee mead. Again, you're going to fill it about an inch from the top. Put it away and let it sit for a little while. That's that one. Well, I'm gonna finish these. All right, again, I cleaned and sanitized. It's getting sweatier and sweatier. So I'm gonna uh, skater pee. If you wanna learn how to make a skater pee, there'll be a card to each one of these. I'm gonna be using a regular wine bottles on this with a number nine cork. Again, like everything else, I like mine dry, so this will not be back sweetened. Okay, this is a Skeeter pea. It's a lemon wine. So on this corker, you drop, already did it, but you drop your cork down here, then you place on your bottle and just push it down on there. There we go. When you hear it pop, just like anything else, you know it's ready. Then after this, I'm going to put a little, either right on the label or sticker and uh, put on what it is so I don't get them all mixed up. So I'm going to bottle up the rest of these and we'll be right back. This is a apple wine, apple wine I started a year ago. So if you want to learn how I did that, there'll be a card coming down. Again, I'll be uh, bottling these into wine, wine bottles that uh, are reused. Now, if you don't like these uh, labels on them, there are several ways to get them off. Well, I guess one way, but several different products you can use. Uh, you can soak them. I soak them in borax. You can try soaking them in OxyClean. And usually the uh, labels just come right off. I wanted to get this done today, so I didn't get a chance to get these labels off. Again. I'll show you this time. Drop, and if you need one of these, there'll be the uh, Amazon affiliate link descriptions in the bottom. In the description, <laughs> I'm getting tired. It's a uh, Amazon affiliate links will be in the description below. Where I got this one. It's kind of nerve-wracking. Gotta put some little bit of muscle into it <sighs> till you hear the pop buddy of mine he uses this little thing almost just like a plunger he just i'm like no nope, not me and that's what it looks like well, thank you for uh joining me today while i bottle up a lot of my wines and ciders that i made and meats one meat two wines one cider uh, we got a sparkling ginger cider we had a coffee mead a skeeter pea an apple wine and a plum wine and if you want to learn uh, to make any of these things, there'll be links in the description below. Also, in, there'll be uh, Amazon affiliate links if you need anything. Help support my channel. Uh, 
even if you go about your own uh, normal Amazon shopping, click one of my links instead. Uh, help support this channel. Help me go to buy equipment and ingredients. Also, if you want to keep continuing watching, learning more how to make wines, there'll be a, a, a playlist come up. Just keep on watching. And this is Chris with Winemaker TV. And that's all there is today.